Hi, I'm Andrew Smith, Associate Director of Virginia Farm Bureau's Governmental Relations Department. And I'm Stephanie Kitchen, Legislative Specialist for Virginia Farm Bureau Government Relations. I want to start off by thanking everyone who attended our Farm Bureau Legislative Day this past Monday. It was extremely well attended. We kicked it off with a new attendee orientation hosted by our young farmers and growing leaders. I want to thank all of those who participated and shared some tips with people who were attending Legislative Day for the first time on how to interact with their legislators. I also want to thank the Women's Committee members who volunteered to help distribute grilled chicken sandwiches to legislators who are walking from the General Assembly building to the Capitol. It was a great way to get their attention and show what Virginia products are produced here in our state and how they can be made and distributed and food that we all enjoy. Of course, the, the main reason for being here was the issues. Uh, Andrew, I know some of your issues that were presented to members on Monday actually saw some action this week. Yes, it did, Stephanie. As you know, we're approaching crossover, so a lot of the bills are being wrapped up before crossover. And one of the bills that, or issues that I appreciate our members talk to the legislators about was the I-81 Improvement Corridor Plan uh, that was being discussed in the General Assembly and action was taken uh, this week in the prospective houses. Uh, as introduced, Delegate Steve Landis and Senator Mark Obenshane, uh, they carried the bills that, as introduced, had tolls that would have been the funding source to do that improvement plan. Uh, both of those bills would have set the tolls in there. However, both uh, bills, the tolls part has been stripped out of the bills, and now what the bills going forward sets up a fund to receive funds for the improvement plan and also sets up a review council to review the plan over the next year, continue to talk to stakeholders and have elected officials uh, review the uh, proposed improvements as well as potential funding sources. There were also a uh, few bills that would have increased the state's motor fuels tax uh, for funding and a portion of that would have gone to the I-81 improvement plan, uh, but those uh, no longer will be increased into motor fuels tax. However, a segment of one of those bills is continuing forward that would call on the Secretary of Transportation to review fuel efficiency and the introduction of electric vehicles and how those things have impacted the current motor fuels uh, tax revenue source, how it has been declining over the years. Also, I do want to mention one of the uh, issues that been, has been covered, and that's uh, tobacco labor, child labor uh, in the tobacco fields. Many of our farmers that still run tobacco farms, their kids that are growing up in their family, uh, work on their family farms, that bill would have kept them from working in the fields. Uh, that bill uh, was defeated in committee. That's great. Also an issue that we've talked about before, industrial hemp. As members who attended Legislative Day know, there were three industrial hemp bills going around the General Assembly. Two, one by Delegate Danny Marshall and one by Senator Frank Ruff were the ones that Farm Bureau is supporting. Um, Senator Frank Ruff's bill passed the full, the full Senate. Um, Delegate Marshall's bill passed the House Agriculture Committee. These were the ones that Farm Bureau did support because they were in compliance with the 2018 Federal Farm Bill, which would have allowed hemp to be grown by removing it from the definition of marijuana. Senator Morrison's bill also attempted to do similar results, but was not in compliance with the Federal Farm Bill, so we opposed that bill, and it did die in committee this week. So that was just a quick update of some of the issues that we discussed at Legislative Day and saw action this week. Um, if y'all have any questions, please comment below or feel free to shoot us an email, contact any member of our team, and as always, thanks for following us.